Welcome to Saving Graces, the series in which I'm talking to people with a lockdown story to tell. Regarded by others as a saving grace, they've gone above and beyond in very testing times. Well, today it's lovely to be with Paul Robinson, who until a couple of weeks ago chaired the Good Neighbour Scheme in North Walsham. And I think you were telling me earlier, Paul, that as soon as lockdown was announced by the government, the council reached out to you and your team and asked you to step up to this new challenge. What do you think it was about your scheme which encouraged them to do that? The scheme was well established at the beginning of COVID. We uh, are in our fifth year, in fact, and we're looking forward to celebrating our Mm. fifth anniversary. Uh, And so we had in place a good, well-experienced group of volunteers. We had the systems and policies in place to enable us to react quickly to the situation. And uh, we were quite well known and respected, I think, in the town. Yes, so they were confident in asking us to help. So pre-COVID, your response would normally have been a reactive one. But in this new crisis, you shifted gear to be much more proactive. What sort of things were you doing as soon as lockdown got underway? Well, instead of just waiting for neighbours to call us requesting help, we looked through a list of contacts that we had had from neighbours over the last 12 months and phoned up each one of those just to remind them we were here and to inquire whether they might need Mm. any help of of any kind, really, Uh, and to say that that if um, they would like us to make contact with them on a fairly regular basis just to make sure that everything was still okay, we would do that. Was it very full on at the height of the crisis? Can you give us some idea of the scale? Well, it was. It was... (laughs) quite dramatic the number of uh, calls that we got. We had to uh, make sure that our policies and our practice was conforming to COVID principles, of Of course. course. Um, We had, with the help of the town council, sent out leaflets to every household in the town. And in that, we were saying to people, if you needed any kind of help, this is the number to call. And um, also, if people felt moved to uh, assist in any way, to volunteer, then we would welcome their support. And obviously, a lot of people came forward on both counts, requesting help, but also offering help. And that must have been wonderful, but it it upped your work as well, because they all had to be trained and safeguarded, etc. Yes, safeguarding was a very high objective for us. We wanted to make sure that all of our neighbours who were going to have any contact with our volunteers felt secure and safe. And so um, we had to go through the appropriate safeguarding training and make sure that everyone was DBS checked who was going to have face-to-face contact or direct contact with our neighbours. And in addition to all the normal uh, practical support that you offer, like dog walking and gardening and shopping, you initiated two new things. Can you tell us about those? Yes. One of the things that people were saying they appreciated was just a phone call occasionally just to check how they were, to talk over their feelings and what was really happening Mm. in the outside world Mm. because a lot of people, those who were um, sheltering, just hadn't got much idea what was happening in the town. And so we established what we called a phone befriending rota, where a lot of our volunteers were allocated to phoning different um, neighbours who had requested it just on a weekly or a fortnightly basis, just to give a cheery chat and to say, we're here to help if you need anything. Mm. And, and that was brilliant. And similarly, we we recognised that there were a lot of people in local residential homes who might not have any family at all. And therefore, we dis- we initiated a letter writing um, initiative, which meant that some of our volunteers, some of our very creative volunteers, mm. were able to write letters, send cards, produce little bits of art or, or craft. And we made these available to the residential homes and um, the residents there. Brilliant. And I think you were telling me earlier that one of the people who was receiving practical help also got involved in the scheme. Yes, that was really wonderful. It was uh, 
quite elderly lady who we'd given um, some practical help with before. Um, and when I phoned her, she was feeling very low. She'd had a, a series um, of, of bereavements in close order and uh, was feeling very down. And I suggested that maybe she would appreciate a phone call from one of our volunteers uh, or even a letter. And at that, her ears pricked up because she said, well, I, I actually do love writing letters and I am an artist and I've missed the opportunity mm. to paint. Could I contribute letters and include a piece of art with that? And that has been absolutely brilliant. For her and for the recipient. Absolutely. So, so it's a, there's a wonderful sort of mutuality of neighbourliness yes. coming through there. And I expect there have been lots of other examples of that as well. There have. And it just demonstrates, I think, the principle that everybody, everybody, regardless of their situation, has something to offer their neighbour. Mm. Paul, there'll be many, I have no doubt, across North Walsham who will feel that you and your team have been saving graces over the last few months. But who, I wonder, have been saving graces for you? I think for us, the, the essence of our team, the people who were working together um, to provide the responses, both individually and collectively, were absolutely fantastic everybody stood up to the plate the number of volunteers that came forward brought with them specialist skills that they could offer um, including bereavement counseling mental health experience and so we were able to share the load across the team mm. and across all those citizens who came forward to support the scheme yeah in many ways paul COVID threatened to undermine the way we live in communities. What would be your prayer for the future? That the same willing action and resilience shown by the community during the COVID crisis could be carried forward mm. and uh, applied to similar crises that we as a community in a country and a world are likely to be facing. For example, the climate crisis. Thank you so much. Let's pray. God of compassion, we thank you for the energy and empathy of those who have cared for their neighbours in recent months. Breathe into our communities, we pray, that same passion and resilience for tackling together other pressing issues of our time. Amen. <laughs>